Now let's see, this section is when we're going to be finding linear equations. So recall that an equation of a line can be put into sloped intercept form, which I just wrote here as y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b, there we go, and b is the, well it's not really the y-intercept, but it's the, here let me put it this way, the y-coordinate of the y-intercept right? Because remember it goes 0 comma b, like that. All right, so using that slope intercept form, we're going to find an equation of a line that has this point and this slope. And it's not actually going to be too bad. I know you think I'm crazy, but it's true. Here's the plan. So we take our equation y equals mx plus b, and we say, okay, we know that m is 3. So let's substitute that in, 3x plus b. All right, now the trouble is we got to find b. When you're all done with a problem like this, it should be like y equals 3x plus 2 or y equals 5x minus 7. It should be a number here for m and a number here for b because they're constants. Every different line has a different set of numbers for these, but they won't change for that line. Whereas x and y change all the time. They're variables. And we learned that way back in unit 1. Okay, so what could I do? Well, I can use the point. We have a point, negative 4, comma, 5. Negative 4 is x, 5 is y, because that's an ordered pair. x comes first. So we say 5 equals 3 times negative 4 plus b. And we can solve this for b. Well, the thing we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to go 5 equals negative 12 plus b. And then we want to add 12 to both sides. So you want to add 12 to the left and then add 12 to the right. Oh, hold on, i got to unalign that. There we go. So add 12 over here to the left, add 12 over here to the right. Add it to both sides. Okay? And then, what will that give you? That'll give you 17 equals b. Now you think you're all done, and you're close. But you have to write the equation when you're done. So you have to say, okay, it was y equals 3x plus 17. All done. You've now learned how to find the equation of a line given a point and a slope. All right, so now let's do some more. Using the sloped intercept form to find an equation of a line, um, excuse me, use slope intercept form to find the equation of a line that uh -oh, goes through this point and has that, or excuse me, this point and has that as its slope. Well, then. Well, it's going to be the same idea. I'm going to put it right over here just because so I have space. Same idea, except we've got some fraction action. Sounds like a bad superhero. <laughs> All right, fraction action Johnson. All right, so. He'll be appearing in the next Vin Diesel movie. All right, so negative 2 is your y value equals negative 4 thirds is your slope times 5. That's your x value. All this other stuff was not there, so we're going to ignore it and just look at what we've got so far. So we put in our slope of negative 4 thirds times x plus b, and then we're going to have negative 2 equals negative 4 thirds times 5. All right, now, what is negative 4 thirds times 5? Well, remember, this is really 5 over 1, right? Because any number is over 1. So when you do that, you just multiply, right? You go 4 times 5, which gets you negative 2 equals um, negative, if you like, 20 over 3. Oops, plus b. Right? So you say, okay, negative 20, 4 times 5 is 20, over 3. Now this is currently negative plus b. This is adding and subtracting over here. So to make it go away, we're going to have to add 20 over 3 to both sides. And this is what I was leaving this in for. Add 20 over 3 to the left. And then we add 20 over 3 to the right. Now over here, this is all going to cancel, right? Or subtract away, because when you have negative 20 over 3 plus 20 over 3, it all goes, right? Oopsie. So this part on the right is gone. 
and you're left with B. All we got to do is figure out this stuff on the left. So we say, okay, B is negative 2 plus 20 over 3. Let me make that go away. All right, now, well, you can't do that, right? You need them, them to have the same denominator. So you need 20 over 3 is fine, but you've got to get negative 2 into something that has 3 as a denominator. So what you do is you multiply by 3 over 3, right? If you do that, multiply by 3 over 3, you're going to get 2 times 3, which is 6, negative 6, right? Or if you like, the negative can be in front. doesn't really matter, but negative 6 over 3 plus 20 over 3 makes 14 over 3. Also keep in mind the TI 83 and 84 calculators have that math menu where you can make the calculator do a lot of this without all the by hand work. All right, so we're going to get y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 14 over 3. So, and again, remember, you have a calculator that'll do a lot of this, right? The calculator can do negative four-thirds times five, no problem. And then you press math and pick number one fraction, and it'll make it turn into a fraction. Then it'll do negative two plus 20 over three with the math fraction button. So you can fiddle around in there and make it do a lot of this stuff for you. All right, so we're all done with that one. Now, what about these ones down here? Well, remember that when your slope is zero, we learned this before, but when your slope is zero, that's a horizontal line. Now, horizontal lines have particular equations. They look like y equals b. So for us, what's it going to have to be? y equals, now look at your point. Which one of those two letters is the y? Or two numbers, excuse me, is the y. It's the 4, right? So there you go. y is equal to 4. Now, if you want to do it longhand, you know, if that just freaks you out and you don't know what else to, to think about it. Hold on. There you go. I can prove it to you. It was y equals mx plus b, right? So that's y, let me see, 4 equals m was 0 x was negative 3 plus b. So I'm substituting in my m and my x and my y. This part all turns into 0, right? And 0 plus b means 4 equals b. Therefore, you've got the equation y equals 0x. 0x is gone, right? So it's this, but you don't ever write it because 0 times anything is 0 plus 4. There's your equation. Okay. All right, now what about the vertical line over here? So undefined, remember, we learned this before, is a vertical line. So it's x equals a, any a being any constant. All right, so let's substitute. Oh, except you can't. See the problem? So the issue is that m is undefined. There's nothing to substitute for it because you don't know how it works, right? So all this whole substitution rigmarole is off the off the table. All you can write is x equals a number, right? Now, what number is it going to be? Well, look at your point. Negative 5, comma 1, which one's the x value? The negative 5, right? There you go. There's your equation. Diggy done. All right. And again, those two are really kind of special cases. We've learned them before, but horizontals are y equals number, verticals are x equals number, and you pick the number out from the point that you need. So this one was a y, so we could use the y value. This one was an x, so we use the x value. All right, now how do you do it if there's two points given to you? Well, very carefully. <laughs> I got myself up. Okay, so we know it's y equals mx plus b, right? The issue is we need to find m and we need to find b, okay? So what about m? Let's start there. m is equal to y2, oops, 2, there we go, minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? 
Now look at your two points. You can see y2 is negative 6 minus y1 is 4. Let me make that a little wider so you can see better. There we go. Now your x2 was 2 minus negative 3. That's a minus a minus. You got to be careful with those. So this one had a negative 6 in front. That was y2. There's x2 that goes with it. The number two. Then there's minus x, or excuse me, minus y1, so that's minus 4. y1 was 4. And then on the bottom, it's minus negative 3 because that's your x value. All right, what does that mean? That's negative 10 on the top over 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. And negative 10 over 5, last time I looked, was negative 2. Do you agree with me so far? All right. And then also, don't forget. We want y equals mx plus b. I'm going to put that in right here. All right, now how have I helped us? Well, by finding the slope, right, we already know that we've got, hey, once the slope is negative 2, then I can say, okay, then I know it's y equals negative 2x plus b. Okay, but I still have to find a number for b. Oh, how could I ever find it? Well, if only I had a point I could substitute for x and y, right? Oh, but you do. You have two of them. So pick whichever one you like. I'll pick the one on the left and say, okay, so I'll say 4 equals negative 2, parentheses, times negative 3 plus b. That's 4 equals 6 plus b. You subtract 6 from both sides. And then you get negative 2 equals b. So what's the equation when you're all done? It's y equals oops, um, negative 2x minus 2. There you have it. All right, now let's do it again, but with decimals. And this is going to be a little bit uglier. I could do most of this math in my head, but I won't be able to here. But you're still going to be using y equals mx plus b, right? So you need to, first you need to find your slope, but it's going to be a bit harder because you've got all these decimals. Oops, I paused you and I typed it up a little bit. Okay, so you have negative 1.39, that's your y2, minus 8.11, sorry that was a typo, see, 8.11, over 2.67, minus a minus again, minus a minus 3.25. And then I just, you know, used a calculator to find this, that was negative 9.5, used a calculator to find this, that was 5.92. Actually, to be honest, I did it in my head, but you could use a calculator to do it. Now, this part I can't do in my head. We're going to take 9.5 and divide it by 5.92. It was 9.5 divided by 5.92, I think it was. And you can see it's 1.604, and it says it wants two decimal places. So we're going to say negative 1.60. There's our slope. All right, now we're going to have to substitute. So we'll take y equals mx plus b, and we'll say y equals negative 1.60x plus b. Then we're going to substitute in either one of those points in for x and y. I'll just pick the first one. So it's 8.11 equals negative 1.60 times negative 3.25 plus b. All right, I'm going to go grab a calculator and find what negative 1.60 times negative 3.25 is. And by calculator, I mean Excel. Let me see here. It was 5.2. So I get 5.2 plus B. Then I got to subtract 5.2 from both sides. And that gives us 2.91 over here is equal to B. Now keep in mind, because we rounded our slope a little bit to make it negative 1.6, so it's possible that there's a little bit of rounding error. I happen to know that when I did it a different way, I ended up with like 2.89 for my back one. So it just, it just depends a little bit on your rounding here for slope and then which point you picked. So they might be a tiny bit different from each other, depending on your rounding. All right, we're done with that section. I'll meet you back here for the next one in the next video. Ooh, story problem time. That'll be fun.